Hi, I'm Pat. Welcome back. First, I want to say thanks to all of our new subscribers for helping me grow the channel. I really appreciate it. Today, we're going to be making an improv crazy mini quilt called Down the Rabbit Hole. This video is going to include piecing, quilting, binding, and some applique. Thanks for being here. All right, I'm glad you're here. Let's jump right in. So for this quilt, I'm gonna be starting with some scraps and I'm gonna start really small. If you saw the crazy sunset quilt that I did, I started by taking some scraps and sewing them together with odd shapes and odd angles. I'm doing a similar kind of thing here, but this time I'm focusing on making it smaller than what I did last time. And I'm also starting from the center and kind of building my way outward in a spiral. With all these really small seams, I don't want to get up and go to the pressing table all the time. So what I'm using is a hand pressing roller. That's the blue handled tool that you can see that looks like a little steamroller. What that does is allows me to um, press the seams uh, at the table. There's no heat or steam involved. Um, just pushing on it, rolling it, and that's good enough for me to be able to continue sewing additional seams that intersect. And then once in a while, I'll get up and go to the pressing table and just press everything smooth. You may have noticed that a lot of the pieces I'm cutting to sew onto this uh, quilt are in a triangle shape. And that's because um, in the end, once everything's together, uh, a lot of what you see from each piece is gonna wind up being somewhat triangular. Uh, really, that, that shape helps me kind of build out what becomes more or less a circle. There's no real rhyme or reason to how I'm um, choosing the, the placement and the size of these pieces. I'm really just trying to keep things visually balanced, um, you know, so things are similar size and then working my way around the center so it grows in a symmetric way. I did start with some really deep warm colors at the center, like the oranges and reds, and then I'm slowly moving to softer, gentler colors as I get further away from the center. There's certainly no rules here in terms of shape or pattern or color. Most importantly, I'm picking prints from my stash that I like the look of, because in the end, I want it to look good. It's fine to either trim the edges as soon as you sew the piece on, or to leave the edges and then just trim it at the last minute before you sew another piece that connects to it. Either way works, it doesn't really matter. You can see right here that I'm going around the edges and trimming all of them at one time, just to give me a visual sense of where we're going next. You can see in this photo I've tried to keep things symmetric, and then let's take a look at the back, and there you can see the seams in case you're curious what the back looks like. From here out, I'm gonna use some bluer, colder colors. So I'm hitting the stash again just to get out some new fabrics to work with. So with these new prints, I'm really continuing the same process that I've been doing. The only difference here is that some of the pieces are getting a little bit bigger, uh, just as this centerpiece gets bigger. In this case, I've chosen to repeat some prints at different locations around the circumference just because they're a little larger and spaced out farther apart. Next, I'm going to take this strip set that I have in my scrap stash and I'm going to uh, cut it so that it creates a patchwork effect that goes all the way around the circumference of the quilt. This is going to become like an inner border.
the inner border done, now I'm going to start building an outer border. So this print that I've chosen, I've got enough of it that I can surround the entire uh, quilt with it, uh, with the directionality of the print kind of going out radially. So I think this is going to work nicely for an outer border. So I'm going to cut pieces that I can sew on to each of the longer edges, and then I'll use smaller pieces to fill in in between as needed. You may have noticed that the quilt center has become a hexagon of sorts. It doesn't have equal length sides, but there are six distinct sides now, and that makes it a little easier for me to attach this outer border instead of having something that's more like a circle. That would be a lot more challenging. Next, I'm trimming down the width of the outer border. I didn't like it as wide as it started, so I'm uh, trimming it to about two inches of width all around. So here's the piece top that we've made so far, and we're now done with this phase. All right, now I've got the top finished. And so the next step is going to be to choose a backing fabric and then decide how I want to quilt this. So for backing fabric, I'm going to use this. Uh, this is a scrap that was in the stash. Um, given the overall look of this and the the um, theme of going down the rabbit hole. I want to use this because it has that kind of surreal, uh, you know, confusion look to it. And I think it goes well with the front. So, so this will be the back. And for quilting, I haven't quite decided yet. I think what I might do is to simply do something like matchstick quilting, but I might do it in triangles just to give it a, something a little bit unusual. Um, so maybe a triangle spiral working out from the center might be cool. So um, anyhow, that's, that's where we are. And so next we'll get started on the quilting. So I'm gonna lay out the backing fabric on the batting, make it nice and smooth, and then flip it over and put the top in place. Then I'm using safety pins to base this together. So I thought some more about the quilting design, and instead of doing triangles, I'm actually going to do a spiral working its way out from the center, with each row quilted pretty close to its neighboring row. I think this is going to work well with the theme of the quilt. So this quilting design is pretty easy to execute. I'm just working my way out from the center, following the curve from the previous row. I'm not worrying too much about precise uh, spacing between rows. I'm letting it kind of go up or down a little bit in different areas. I don't want it to look too perfect. That's kind of not the point here. I, I don't mind if it has a little bit of fluctuation. In case you're curious, I'm using Aurifil 50 weight uh, cotton thread top and bottom. This is the same thread that I like to use on the long arm. I'm not using a walking foot, just a regular foot here. I do have to be careful as I go to make sure that the backing fabric doesn't accidentally get bunched up. So I'm using my right hand while I sew to keep things smoothed out. I really like how this quilting design is looking on the backing fabric. I think it's a great fit.
Okay, with the quilting done, next I'm just going to square up the edges, and I'm using the outside edge of the outer border and cutting along that line. I could change the shape of the outer edge if I wanted to at this point, but I'm happy with how it looks right now. I have some excess binding scraps in my stash, and uh, the nice thing about a small quilt like this one is it's not too hard to find a scrap that's long enough to go ahead and bind a quilt this size. The way I like to do binding is to apply it by machine to the front and then I hand stitch the back. I sometimes cut binding on a bias, uh, sometimes I cut it straight. This uh, scrap happens to be straight. Either one is fine in this case. And I almost always do my binding at two and a quarter inches. Some people prefer to do a mitered seam to join the starting and finishing edge. I usually just do a straight seam here. I cut the two ends to overlap by a half inch, sew them together with a quarter inch seam allowance, and then stitch the whole thing down. Now we have the binding attached to the front by machine, and the next step will be to hand stitch the binding to the back. To hand stitch the binding, I'm going to pick a color of thread that's similar to the binding fabric, and that way if any of the stitches are showing, even though I do my best to hide them, it won't be so noticeable. Okay, binding is done and everything is looking good. For the last step of this quilt, I'm going to applique a white rabbit sort of near the border, about to head down the rabbit hole. So I started with a shape that I got online for a rabbit jumping, and then I printed that on paper. And I'm going to cut out the paper, and then I'm going to use that to trace it onto fabric. And then I'll cut my fabric and do needle turn applique. I chose a white fabric that's not completely white. It has a little bit of texture to the print. I'm just using a pencil to trace the outside of the paper, and then I'm going to use that as a guide to cut the fabric. When cutting, I'm leaving a, about a quarter inch outside of that line uh, so that I can turn it under for my needle turn applique.
I'm going to applique this piece with white thread so that it blends in with the fabric. And again, I'm using Aurifil 50 weight cotton. All right, with the applique done, we're now finished with this quilt. I'd love to hear what you think, and please let me know if you would have done something differently. Thanks again for joining me. I really hope you liked this episode. I thought this was a fun one because it combines a lot of different techniques. You just might see this one hanging on the wall behind me in a future video. If you did enjoy this, please like and subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.